Good evening. We're so glad you could be here this evening. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. The break's nearly here. This meeting of the Tom ISD Board of Trustees is called to order at 5.34 p.m. For the record, a quorum of the board is present. All trustees are in attendance tonight. Meeting is being, in, being recorded in accordance with government code section 551.128. The board discussed agenda items during workshop meeting on Monday night. This evening, opening remarks will be offered by Trustee Matt Scheel. The pledges will be led by Trustee Justin Unzer and the mission statement will be recited by Trustee John McStravick. Dr. Z is not able to be with us tonight. So I will now turn the meeting over to Dr. Amy Schindewolf, Chief of Staff, to proceed with our recognitions this evening. Oh, forgive me, forgive me. What am I saying? I'm good. It's my last night here at the lectern, so we'll... I, I got to finish on the same note I've been on all year. <laughs> all right, let's do this. Uh, please join me for a prayer. That's my open remarks. Tonight's uh, open remarks comes from John 1. 11 through 12, he came to that which he was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet we all who did receive him to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. O oh Lord God, we thank you for allowing us to be called your children. We thank you for giving us the power to become more truly your children so that there may be a witness to your name on earth so that again and again in the name of Jesus Christ, new power may come for body and soul for the for the happy and happy, for all those who are still following false paths, for all those who are suffer so much grief, fear, and need, we thank you and we praise you your name. Help us on our way, help us help us weak people who often grow anxious and afraid. Help us in everything, help us especially in the concern we have deepest in our hearts, and your name may be honored. Uh, please, Please help all of our, all our students, parents, and administrators and teachers on our great Christmas break, and hope I survive back here in January. Amen. 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 Now please join me in reciting the pledges first to the flag of the United States, followed by a pledge to the flag of the great state of Texas. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor, Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Tumble ISD's mission statement. Tumble ISD educates students to become responsible, productive citizens by providing innovative, individually rigorous and personally valuable education experience. Please be seated. Thank you, gentlemen. And now, Dr. Z cannot, cannot be with us tonight. I'll turn the meeting over to Dr. Amy Shinnewolf, Chief of Staff, to proceed with recognitions. Thank you. Thank you, President McLeod. Um, one of our favorite things that we get to do on board meeting nights is recognize our outstanding students. And tonight we have two groups of athletes from our district who we are going to be able to recognize. And so I will call forward our athletic director, Kevin Flanagan, uh, to begin these recognitions. As he's coming up, I'd like to ask the students that as you are called up in your group, if when you come forward, if you'll face the board, we would appreciate that so that we can see you and I'll honor you for your outstanding accomplishments these, this season. Thank you very much, Dr. Schindewell. Mr. McLeod, board, cabinet, thank you for having us this evening. It's a pleasure to be able to welcome this group and recognize them here tonight. Um, last year, about this time, a little bit sooner, um, I watched uh, our coaching staff, led by Coach Lynch, and really working through the girls, and you could see some things that she was doing, and you could see she was putting some things in place, and it is great to see the fruits of all the hard work that she put in, as well as all of these young ladies. So just a little bit about them uh, before Coach Lynch comes up is there's about 247 6A schools in the state of Texas that play volleyball. 
These young ladies uh, made it to the final eight, the elite eight of 247. They finished with a 14 and 0 district record, undefeated uh, district champs. And I went back today and I kind of looked at the records of Tomball Memorial Volleyball. They've never won 30 games in a season. Well, they still don't have 30 games on their record. They just skipped past 30 altogether and they won 40 games this year. Wow. And so very, very proud of them. And with that, I'd like to introduce Coach Sidney Lynch to come up and introduce our girls. Thank you members of the board for this opportunity to just love on my girls again. We had our volleyball banquet last night and so I get to see my girls all dressed up two nights in a row, which normally they're spandex, ponytail, knee pads, a little stinky, but they look beautiful tonight. I'm so excited. Um, little correction, we are technically 41 and nine. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, he was very correct. We went 14-0 and 0 in district, um, something that we have not done in probably four years. Um, you are looking at your undefeated district champion, your bi-district champion, area champion, regional quarterfinal champion, regional semifinal champion, and regional finalist qualifier. Um, while we did make it to the Elite Eight, we actually tie for fifth in the state, so that's the best that our volleyball program has ever done, um, and I believe the best that any Tomball ISD volleyball program has ever done. So we're not only killing it on the court, um, these girls are super smarty pants. Um, and so I'd like to kind of, without announcing all of them and who won, just kind of give you an overview of kind of what those awards might look like. Um, at the district level, we have two district superlatives. We won offensive MVP and defensive MVP. So we're killing it on both sides of the court. Um, we have three first team all district recipients, two second team all district recipients, and two honorable mention recipients. We have 13 academic all district recipients, which means they have a 90 or above um, this, sem this semester or up through the first nine weeks ultimately. We have six girls that qualified for the ABCA best and brightest first team award. That's a combination of not only their grades, so GPA, it's their rank, and also stats are also involved in that. So you have to be good on in all that you do. It's a really hard award to win, and like I said, we had six girls qualify for that. We actually have two girls that this summer will be eligible to compete in the TGCA All-Star Game. One has been named to that team, and one is listed as an alternate, and in our program history, we've never had two on the same team, so that's awesome. We have 12 girls that have qualified for the GHVCA Academic All-District Award, which means they have a 93 cumulative average over their entire high school career up to this point. With that, we also have qualified for the team award because our team average is a 95.89, so we're almost at a 96 average over their high school career. We have seven girls that have qualified for TGCA Academic All-State, which is a 94 average, um, and seven girls that have also qualified for THSCA Academic All-State, which is a 93 average, class rank, SAT, all rolled into one award. We have four girls that have signed a national letter of intent to play next year out of our seniors, and we have a couple more that have offers on the table but just haven't made their decision yet. Um, so I can't speak highly enough of these girls. They work hard every, every day, not just for me, but for their teachers as well. They love each other deeply, deeply, um, and that's been a big part of our culture and I think definitely what has given us so much success this year. So again, I thank you for this opportunity and an opportunity to just love all my girls and, and present them to you. Congratulations. 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 Congratul
Y'all come up, get the picture. Step up there and get them. I know Kevin made mention of Coach Lynch. I had the fortune of my girls playing for Coach Lynch, and what a remarkable gift it was to be under your leadership and to play on your teams, and it's been a blast watching these girls play. Yeah, it's a great season. Thank you. So congratulations to Tomball Memorial um, Varsity Volleyball. Um, Coach Flanagan, we're ready for our state qualifiers in cross country. Thank you very much. And I will start off, keep it with the Tomball Memorial role. Um, I will say this about all of our cross country runners. First of all, um, I don't know why anyone would do what they do uh, to prepare for their sport. Um, it seems like a lot of pain and punishment to me, but um, did a little bit of math today and I figured out there's over 3000 runners that compete at just at the 6A level uh, every year. And then only a select few make it to the state uh, cross country meet and we are fortunate to have five uh, athletes that competed and made it to the state meet and I'm going to start off with coach Todd Kerrigan have him come up and introduce our athlete from Tomball Memorial I thank you again for having the opportunity to have the kids come out because I know it means a lot to them to be recognized um, I'm here to recognize Alexis Garza um, she's a junior at Tomball Memorial um, she has been uh, an outstanding runner with us since she came in as a freshman. Um, had the opportunity to coach her throughout, even actually in the junior high level. Um, Alexis this year um, had an outstanding year. One thing um, that I saw a lot of change, a, a different change in her this year was a lot of commitment. She's really looking to run collegiately, um, getting very involved in looking at schools. Um, and it's really helped her focus on her academics, um, her studies, what she wants to study. Um, and I think that's made her just an outstanding student athlete here in Tomball IC. Um, again, throughout her season, um, had an outstanding, outstanding season, um, a long season. And as we got to the last, our championship meets, the district meet, the regional meet, the state meet, Alexis really began to focus in, um, really trust, trusting her training. Um, she did a great job. We'd sit down and, and really map out and game plan how we were going to run the races. She did exactly the way we plan for each one of them. Um, she finished um, fourth at our district meet, seventh at the regional meet, and 22nd at the state meet. Um, and again, she set our school record for the girls 5K on the state meet course, um, which a lot of the kids will tell you, and I tried running it with her the day before the meet. It is a bear of a course, um, but set our school record um, handily with that um, 22nd place uh, finish at the state meet. Again, she's a junior this year, so really looking forward to this junior track season and then being back here again next year uh, for her senior year, uh, and hopefully we can see even more improvement with that. So congratulations, Alexis Garza.
Maybe we can get Coach Parker or Dr. Bailey to get out there and run that course with you also. I think that'd be fun to, I think it'd be fun for everybody. <laughs> I will not be doing that. Uh, next, I'd like to have Coach McQuarrie come up, Austin McQuarrie. And I've watched Austin for seven years now and the time and effort uh, that he has put in with these, these young people. But more than that, and Mr. McLeod, you said something earlier, watching all of these coaches, just the impact they have on these kids is, is very evident. And uh, the impact I've seen with Coach McQuarrie, not only from a, a coaching perspective of cross country, but just the man he is and the impact he has on the kids, as well as our coaching staff, uh, is, is very special. And so uh, very fortunate to have him on staff. And so, uh, Coach McQuarrie. Okay, thank you board members for uh, allowing us to be here this evening and just recognize four individuals that you have in front of you. Uh, they're not just great uh, student athletes, they're, just, they're great kids first and foremost. So definitely wanna put that out there. Um, I know I don't have time to speak about their whole season. We'll be here all night and I get long winded. So I'm just gonna kinda get quick hitters on them uh, this year and uh, what they did so you kinda get to know them uh, let's see, we'll start with, like Coach said earlier, there's a lot of kids in the state of Texas that run cross country. Being an individual sport, there's several thousand kids. Um, just kind of as we get to uh, just some information on each one, just at the regional meet themselves, there's over 170 kids that they're competing against just in their particular region in itself. And so just getting there, um, our, our playoff season is really short. It's district. And you got regionals and you got, and then you got state. That's it. It's not like a team sport where you got different rounds. So you got to kind of be on on the day when you need to be there, ready to go. And these kids have done a great job with that. And I want to start with uh, our sophomore, our youngest that we have is Landon Fleece. If he'll just kind of step forward so we know who he is or recognize him. Uh, last year, actually, Landon, as a freshman last year, was our number six runner on our team. This year, he finished the season being our number one runner. He's a serious runner. Um, you know, kind of, kind of pull him back a little bit to make sure he doesn't do too much. But he gets excited uh, about what he does. And as a coach, I'm excited to see what happens in the next two years, being the success that, with regards to the success he's had this year. He finished second at the district meet. He finished 12th in the region. Uh, that day in itself was a, a great day. Just coming into the, uh, the meet itself, he was kind of projected at 34th, and he finishes 12th. So he had a great day. Uh, first time qualifier for the state meet, and uh, I don't think it's going to be his last. Uh, knowing him, uh, I don't think it's his last. It's kind of like a shark. Once you get a taste of blood, you're going to go back. And so I think that's what he's going to do. Our next person that we have I wanted to introduce is Scarlett Berthelet. She is a junior, and um, she, she's kind of seen more as a track athlete in some respects on my part, but she has been running cross country. And then this fall, the, it's kind of like the light bulb just kind of went off. And uh, she really became dedicated. She figured out what the sport's all about. She's uh, started working real hard and it started to improve considerably. At the district meet, she finished eighth. At the uh, regional meet, she finished 21st. Uh, the thing with that, I think in the last uh, about 100 meters or so was her finish. Uh, she gave it everything she, had, everything she had, passed several kids, and put her in a spot to actually qualify for the state meet for her first time. As, as a junior, and, um, and I think as of this year, just moving into next year, she's going to move in being our number one runner moving into our uh, fall in 2024. The next individual uh, I'd like to introduce is Fenton Lehman. He is our senior. Fenton, is, uh, he's been our leader. Uh, he had a brother ahead of him, also in the same boat, uh, just a, a great person. He's one that the kids do look up to for guidance. He is uh, that person in which uh, the young ones really, um, you know, follow in his footsteps, let's say. He was here a couple of years ago uh, being recognized with his brother and the boys team. So this year, though, it was an individual which was a, uh, that's icing on the cake. He was pushing for that for four years and then finishing very well here at the end. He finished fifth at the district meet, finished 23rd in the region. Um, kind of like with Landon, on paper, he was projected 54th, and he finishes uh, 23rd and qualifies for the state meet. Those are uh, two great races that day. So first time uh, qualifier individually. We do hate to see him go. We hate to see his character of this person actually leave 
uh, us. Our last person we have is Lainey Nash. She's a senior. Uh, she's no stranger to this evening. This is her third straight year being recognized for cross country and competing at the state meet. She's our most decorated individual on the female side. And as coaches, you always hate to see uh, someone like this person leave. You hate to lose that type of person. But, you know, they had an impact on your team. But then you just kind of look forward to what their future holds. And then you see what happens from here on. She finished third at the district meet. She finished fifth in the region. Had a great finish, a great race that day. She qualified again for the state meet for her third year in a row. And uh, we're just going to kind of wait and see where her talents as well as Fenton's talents take them in the future. And both uh, Laney and Fenton are both academic All-State as well. So uh, with that being said, uh, thanks for this evening and giving us the opportunity to recognize them. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys again next year. Thank you. So the success that we have um, demonstrated in those two programs are just um, a symbol of our culture of excellence that we have in our athletic programs and our high schools in general. So that does complete our recognitions for this evening. And I turn it back over to you, President McLeod. This is a good time for the yeah, if, if any of you would like to leave, you're welcome to at this time. We're going to get into some of our agenda. Thank you so much. We're so impressed. You kids keep it up. It's awesome. Have a good Christmas. You bet. Thank you all. All right. We have no one who has signed up on agenda items to speak. We have some non-agenda item speakers that will be at the end of the meeting. And this is that time when we annually reorganize the board. And I've got some legalese I need to read through here. We will now proceed with the reorganization of the board. The election of officers for the 2024 TISD Board of Trustees shall begin. In accordance with Texas Education Code 11.061C and board policy BDAA local, Nominations shall be accepted for the positions of President, Vice President, Secretary, and Assistant Secretary. The offices will be elected in that order. I will serve as the presiding officer until a new president is elected. At that time, the new president will preside over the election of the remaining positions. Once each office is announced and the floor is open for nominations, any board member may place a name in nomination. No second is required. After determining that no further names are to be placed in nomination, the presiding officer will declare the nominations closed. Each nominee will be voted upon in the order the names were placed in nomination. All in favor will be asked to signify by raising their hand. If a majority of those present and voting is achieved, no further votes for the office shall be taken. If no majority is achieved, the next name placed in nomination shall be voted upon and so on until the office is filled. Before we begin, are there any questions regarding the procedures? Everybody got it? A, nomination to elect school board president. The floor is now open for the office of president of the board of trustees. Are there any nominations? President McLeod. 
I would like to nominate Mr. John McStravick for the position of board president. John McStravick nominated for board president. There's no need for a second. All in favor of John McStravick as board president. Motion passes unanimously. John McStravick is now the elected president of the Tomball ISC Board of Trustees. There you go. All right, thank you, Lee. Um, before we get going, though, I will take this opportunity personally to just say thank you. Thank you for the person you are. Um, thank you for the board member you are. Um, thank you for the president you've been. Um, the leadership that you showed, the uh, passion you have, the, um, you, the empathy you have, and the way you, you, you lead from the heart is a, is a testament to all of us. And, and I appreciate that. I appreciate working with you as a board member. And um, uh, thank you very much for the year you spent in the chair. So thank you. All right, so we will move on. We'll now uh, go to uh, the position of board vice president. So the floor is now open for the office of vice president of the board of trustees. Do they have nomi any nominations? Mr. President, I'd like to nominate Justin <coughs> Unser for the position of board vice president. All right, Justin Unser has been nominated. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of Justin Unser for vice president, please raise your hand. All right, motion carries unanimously. Justin, you are now VP of the board. All right, we'll move. <laughs> All right, we will now move on to board secretary. Uh, the floor is now open for nominations for the office of secretary of the board of trustees. Mr. President, I would like to nominate Mark Lewandowski for secretary of the school board. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor of Mark Lewandowski for Secretary of the Board, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Mark, you are now Secretary of the Board. Thank you. <laughs> all right, we now move into the Assistant Secretary position. Um, at this time, the floor is now open for nominations for the Board Assistant Secretary. Do I have any nominations? President McStravick. Yes, trustee McLeod. Yeah, this is your lone and plain trustee, Lee McLeod. <laughs> I nominate Dr. Michael Pratt as assistant secretary of the board of trustees. All right, are there any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor of Dr. Pratt as board assistant secretary, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Dr. Michael Pratt, you are now board right, assistant right. secretary. <laughs> okay, with that, we will now be moving into the uh, consent agenda. Uh, so do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So, so moved. Second. All right, the motion is made by Mr. Lewandowski, seconded by Mr. Scheel. Is there, well, no discussion on the consent agenda, I, I guess. Um, with that, we'll move into the vote. Uh, all those in favor of the consent agenda, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. We'll now move into the considered agenda. All right, the first few items are kind of go along with um, reorganizing the board as well. So um, the first item is going to be appointing two members of the school board to the audit committee. The chair is uh, nominating Mr. McLeod and Mr. Shield to the audit committee. If there's no objection, then we by acclamation will accept that appointment. Okay. So thank you, Mr. McLeod and Mr. Shield, audit committee members. You're welcome. We'll now move to item B. Item B is uh, for the board policy committee. The chair would like to nominate Dr. Pratt and Mr. Lewandowski for the policy committee. Is there any objection to accepting that by acclamation? 
All right, hearing none, Mr. Lewandowski and Dr. Pratt, you, you guys are the policy committee. Next item, C, will be with respect to the budget committee, board budget committee. The chair would like to uh, propose Mrs. Salem and Mr. Unser to be on that committee, budget committee. Is there any objection to that? If not, we will accept that by acclamation as well. Okay. All right, moving on to the fourth and final board committee is the advocacy committee. Uh, for this committee, the chair is uh, nominating Mrs. Salem and Mr. Lewandowski. Is there any objections or comments with respect to those nominees? All right, can we accept that then by acclamation? Yes. Hearing no objections, they are accepted. Okay, so we've now populated the four standing uh, committees of the board. Let's move into item E. This is to approve the 2024 local public inf information calendar for purposes of the Texas Public Information Act. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All right, the motion is made by Dr. Pratt, seconded by Mr. McLeod. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I, I just want to reinforce uh, what this is. Uh, this is not an adjustment to our academic calendar, right? That's set. We have a rolling two year. Uh, program that is well received by the community. This is actually an administrative calendar that the district uses uh, to support Freedom of Information Act requests and ultimately establish what I am describing as a service level agreement. So I just I'd like to over communicate what this is so folks don't have a sense that oh the board changed the, the calendar and my you know I need to think uh, and adjust my Thanksgiving or my Christmas holiday or spring break. Well, that's not what this is. Right. This is simply an administrative act that we're uh, approving uh, for the superintendent to execute uh, you know, when the, the, the district is available on what business days to receive Freedom of Information Act requests. So just uh, wanted to really reinforce that point. Okay. Any other comments? If not, all those in favor, raise your right hand. All right, motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item F. Approve the replacement purchase of five refrigeration systems in the amount of $349,606 using food service 240 funds. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. Yes. All right, so the motion was made by Mr. McLeod, and I'm going to give, I guess, Mr. Unser yep. the second. Give Mr. Unser the second. Is there any discussion? All right, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. We'll move on to item G. Approve the recommendation to select Stafford Smith, Inc. from RFP number 957-23 to purchase food service equipment and provide installation for West Intermediate School with the total cost of $1,040,041.77 using bond 2021 funds. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion made by Mr. Shields, seconded by Mr. McLeod. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All right, motion carries unanimously. Item H, approve a right-of-way easement for Harris County traffic at the West Complex on Berry Point Drive. Any surveying costs will be paid using bond 2021 funds. Do I have a motion? Mr. President, I would like to move to amend uh, item H. So, so, Michael, real quick, let's get it on the floor first, okay. and then you can offer the amendment. So, I'd like to make a motion to support. Okay. I'll second. Okay, so the motion to the motion as drafted uh, was made by Mr. Dr. Pratt and was seconded by Mr. Mr. Unzer. Okay. And so at this point, is there any discussion? Yeah. I'd like to actually make a, a, a move to amend this item by striking the last sentence and inserting including survey cost not to exceed $1,500 using bond 2021 funds. All right, is there a second? Second. All right, so the amendment was made by Dr. Pratt and was seconded by Mr. Scheel. Uh, the, the amendment is to strike the last sentence and to insert the clause, including surveying costs not to exceed $1,500 
using bond 2021 funds. So we're just voting on the amendment right now. Is there any discussion on the amendment? All right, if not, all those in favor of the amendment, please raise your hand. The amendment carries. Now, back on the floor is the amended main motion, which says approve a right of way easement for Harris County traffic at the West Complex on Berry Point Drive, including surveying costs not to exceed $1,500 using bond 2021 funds. Is there any discussion on this amended motion? All right, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. On to item I. Approve service order number seven for Terracon Consultants, Inc. for construction materials testing services at the site for Tomball West High School with a total cost of $572,375 using bond 2021 funds. Do I have a motion? So, so moved. Second. All right, motion made by Dr. Pratt. Oh. What did? Unzer. Oh, was it Unzer? Oh, sorry. All right, motion made by Mr. Unzer, seconded by Mr. McLeod. Is there any discussion? All right, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Item J, approve the furniture budget for West Elementary School not to exceed 800, oh, excuse me. I believe this item has been removed from the agenda. Uh -huh. yeah. So we're going to... Uh, not take up item J. No action will be taken on item J at this time. Uh, moving on. To, I'm sorry, what? Item I voted on J. Or we just voted on I. Um, well, if that's uh, my script has it wrong, then what did you have? Item I. Just voted on. Right. Item J is the one we're not voting. I, that's what I have. I'm sorry, is there something different on yours? Item J is Terracon. Oh, okay. Hmm. We just removed. Oh, they're flip flopped on here. Okay. Okay, so there's a mis description. Yeah, there's a description here on, on the, the number. So item J was to approve the Terracon. Mm -hmm. So that we did just pass. did this. We just did that. That's right. Item I is the one that we will be uh, removing from the agenda at this time. No action will be taken. So if we go back, let me make sure we're all on the same page at this point in the scripts are right. Item K, is that to accept the Tombow Regional yes. Health Foundation? Okay. So we're it appears we're back on track. Item K is to accept the Tombow Regional Health Foundation grant in the amount of $204,412 for tier three supplemental counseling. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion is made by Mr. Lewandowski, seconded by Mrs. Um, Salem. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I, I'd just like to uh, voice my appreciation for not only uh, the great partnership that we've got with the Tomball Regional Health Foundation, but also thank Dr. Webb for continuing to, to partner to, to uh, uh, write grants and establish opportunities for our students. Uh, in this case, you know, supplemental counseling, great need. And so just wanted to uh, verbally express my appreciation for what you and your team are doing, writing grants and, and obtaining available dollars. Uh, so thank you very much. Anything else? Yeah, same, same thing. Just appreciate all the work the team does in the um, Tom Original Health Foundation for, for even uh, sponsoring this. and. Be able to make those funds available to school so a lot of kids in need and every little bit helps yep Thanks. and correct me if i'm wrong dr webb but this is more than twice as much as it we received in the past from them is that correct almost three almost three times yeah it's fantastic okay any other discussion all right all those in favor raise your hand all right motion carries unanimously Moving on to item L. It is recommended that the Board of Education render a finding under Texas Administrative Code Section 249.14G that good cause does not exist as required by Texas Education Code Section 21.105C, 21.160C, or 21.210C for the following educator, Lindsay Corley, to resign her employment contract. 
Do I have a motion? So moved. There's, all right, so the motion was made by Mr. McLeod, seconded by Mrs. Salem. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. We move on to item M. It is recommended that the Board of Education render a finding under Texas Administrative Code Section 249.14G that good cause does not exist as required by Texas Education Code Section 21.105C, 21.160C, or 21.210C for the following educator. Gabriel Carrero to resign his employment contract. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion is made by Mr. Shield, seconded by Mr. McLeod. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, that completes the considered uh, agenda. At this time, we have no, uh, well, we'll move into the um, uh, public comment on non-agenda items at this time. So let me get to that. We do have several people that are signed up. Um, Mr. Segaloff, are you in the audience here? Yeah, so Mark, you may want to start making your way to the podium, but I've got some housekeeping to do first, okay? Um, all right, so these will be, this will be public comment on non-agenda items. The board encourages comments about the district uh, from members of the public. However, speakers are required to conduct themselves with proper respect and decorum in addressing the Board of Trustees and in all conduct during the board meeting. Individuals who do not conduct themselves in an orderly and appropriate manner will receive verbal warning and may be asked to leave the meeting. Due to the large number of individuals uh, wishing to speak tonight and in the interest of time, the following adjustments to the public comment procedure will apply. Each speaker will be allowed to address the board for no more than two minutes. Individuals who are speaking about non-agenda items may only uh, be allowed to discuss one non-agenda item, but everyone who will be speaking will be on non-agenda. So one non-agenda item. For any member of the public who is accompanied by a translator, your time will be doubled as required by law. We will utilize an electronic timer visible on the right side of the speaker's podium. The first one minute will be displayed in green and an audible tone will sound when the speaker has one minute remaining. Another tone will sound when 10 seconds remain and the display will change to red. At the end of two minutes, an audible tone will sound at the end of the session. Remember, the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on the agenda. In addition, the board has adopted policies to provide prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns for employees, students, and their parents, and the general public. Copies of our district policies and procedures on public comment and filing complaints are available on the district website. Thank you for your concern regarding our school district and we will hear you now. All right, Mr. Segaloff, you have two minutes and when you start talking, I will start the timer. All right, good day. Uh, after the last board meeting, uh, there were some rumors through some parental groups in the neighborhood concerning Intermediate 5 and a potential new option uh, within Creekside. At the January board meeting, I'm asking if you could please provide an update concerning Intermediate School 5 and plans for the TIC based upon any new information to ensure transparency for the taxpayers of the district. Thank you so much. Yeah, we had a little bit of a hard time hearing Mr. Segaloff there. That is that mic working well? Test, test. Okay. okay. All right, the next person is Mandy Bailey. And Ms. Becker, you'll be up after Ms. Bailey. Good evening. Good evening. I want to echo Mark's sentiments. Uh, we continue to have a lot of unease in the Creekside community surrounding the TIC property and pending intermediate school number five. 
As a resident of Creekside, I would also like to request that this topic is discussed at the January board meeting and that the board, that the board provides an update on the school and the property. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, Ms. Kara Becker. And uh, Julie Bashang will be after that. Hi, everyone. Um, I, good evening. My name is Kira Becker, um, and I live in Creekside, and you've re received a few emails from me recently. Uh, first, I wanted to say thank you um, to all of the administrators and first responders who helped me. Um, last meeting, I had a medical emergency, and I really appreciate those of you who checked in with me after the fact. I should can see I'm doing better now, so thanks. Um, so I, now on to the boring stuff. Um, I, I want to echo what Mark and Mandy said um, and just add another voice from Creekside to the record. Um, I'd like to ask the board to give an update on intermediate number five in January um, and also what the plans at TIC are. Um, and I hope you're all hearing from all of us that uh, we're looking for more transparency. Um, I, you know, we like to be really involved, and I think that's what you're getting loud and clear um, out of all the Creekside residents. So the more information you can provide us, the less questions we're going to be asking to, like, weigh you down and everything, because we're just looking for information and answers. So thank you all for everything that you do for the district, and I hope you have a good holiday. All right, thank you. All right, Julie Peshang, and then uh, Suzanne uh, Sadursky will be next up. Hi, uh, my name is Julie Peshang. I'm a Tomball resident, and I have two kids, two young boys, who go to Creekview. Um, and I'm also here to speak on intermediate number five. It was during the last board meeting that Dr. Pratt, I believe, said, I do not have an exact quote, but something about tenable land. And if there was tenable land in Creekside, which he was not aware of at the time, but he would like to consider another option for the location of the school. Um, so I think there's been some changes. People have mentioned rumors. I've heard the same rumors. And um, I wanted to thank the board and Dr. Z and the administration for getting creative with the location of the intermediate school because the residents of Creekside and residents all across Tomball don't want to have to travel so far to go to school. Um, and I know that you don't have to consider any other options, but the fact that you're looking at other options makes a world of a difference to us, and I think it'll help the school district too. To have shorter commutes is gonna make it so that kids are able to have free time with their friends, unstructured activities, time with their family, time to study, improve test scores, improve mental health, and that is what's gonna make Tomball ISD truly a destination excellent excellence district like y'all claim and like why we all choose to send our kids here so thank you all right thank you all right suzanne swiderski and then emily zelski you're up next we um brought the people with the easiest last names tonight um I echo their sentiment. However, I also want to strongly urge you to conduct an evaluation of the past reports by Zonda demographers and see what they've predicted and what the actual data has turned out to be. When I've run numbers specifically to the projections of the Creekside schools from 2017 to 2023, the projections were off by well over 20%. I mention this because these demographic numbers that you use and you're making your decisions on are consistently wrong. In 2014, you projected that in 2021, Creekview Elementary would be at 770 students. We were well over 1,000. You can blame the pandemic all you want. However, this is a master-planned community. 
the number of houses was set. There was no reason to be off by over 25%. That margin of error is unacceptable. Any qualified demographic planner should be able to account for the growing of a master planned community. Tom ISD is making these rezone decisions based on bad data, and you also aren't looking at new trends with demographic changes. This is also happening in North Point and the southern part of the district. This data has been presented to you at the listening tours for the last rezone committees. When I asked for information pertaining to Zonda and whether or not this contract had been bid out, the response from the district was that this vendor has been the provider for 10 years and there have been no efforts to evaluate, evaluate providers. All of the districts that surround us use a different demo, demo, demographer. Conroe, SciFair, Klein, Fort Bend, and Katy all use PASA. Frenia, Friendswood uses PBK. I know we are an emerging growth school, but we have now established that we are a large district, and as such, we should be using a demographer who is capable of dealing with such data. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Ms. Zelsky? It's Zelsky, but that's, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. okay. It's, a, it's a married name, so it's, I don't know how to say it either. All right. Thank you so much for your time for our district. I'm sure it's not an easy job getting all these emails from us and just know that we do truly appreciate you serving um, the taxpayers and especially our students, which are our lifeline and our um, just why we're here. Uh, I also want to seriously cons or thank you seriously for considering other locations within Creekside Park and listening to the families of Creekside regarding the location of Intermediate Number 5. I also want to thank you for not following through yet with putting our students on a bus that is miles, which is even more minutes away from our homes. Our kids are very precious to us in all avenues. Academic is one of them, but their social and emotional and mental health is even more important. Obviously, making people in our neighborhood or obviously the people in our neighborhood are very passionate about this topic and will continue to be until a win-win solution is found within our community. Please keep working with the township and please keep us informed regarding any progress. Thank you and have a great holiday. Thank you. Apologize again for the name. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, there were two individuals that had signed up last night. I don't know if they're here. Uh, Carrie Gartner or Morgan Gartner okay all right so that completes our um, our public comment on non agenda items at this point in the meeting we will there is no closed session so we will move on to board comments are any of my fellow board members having comments I think I'll start um, first of all Merry Christmas Happy New Year to all of you um, Appreciate all that you do, and uh, during the holidays, recharge because hopefully when we get back, it'll be on the downhill slope. And um, be safe, enjoy family, friends, and, and just be safe. Secondly, I'd also like to thank Mr. McLeod for his service as board president, being first target. Um, he's done an excellent job. He's made the entire board better by his service on the board and for all that he's done uh, during this past year. So I appreciate you and I thank you so much for what you've done. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate that. I'll respond and just say you, got, you guys have really, uh, it's very touching. The comments you made, it means a lot. Uh, the, the only reason this board is as effective as it is, as it is, is because there's a lot of friendship at this table. and, uh, and I, really appreciate each of you a great deal i mean it means a lot to serve alongside you and that goes beyond the board to the cabinet and all the efforts uh, to to help families raise kids and educate kids the best place in the state i'm just super 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 grateful and godspeed to all of you uh, in the holidays um it's a break from all of the the, the chatter you know you, you, everybody slows down a little bit and i hope everybody gets a good amount of rest um, it's it's a uh, it's a good thing that it's the holidays. I'm grateful to be at this time of year. Yeah. Any other comments? Yeah, I I'd just like to echo um, what John and, and Mark and kind of build on my comments last night. Lee, I think you did a great job. Thank you for your year of service. Um, uh, the paychecks in the mail. 
Um, uh, for, inside joke, right? School board members don't make uh, uh, any salary or benefits and the like, and not uh, uh, here for that. But uh, Lee, uh, you you served well. Thank you for the additional time, uh, the quality of uh, the work that you provided, uh, the conscientiousness that you brought to the position. Um, Lee McLeod listens is probably the theme that uh, I'm taking away from this year. Lee McLeod listens. Um, and I appreciate what you also uh, brought in terms of professional development to the board. Uh, we had more team building this year than we've uh, had in years past. And uh, through your sponsorship, uh, I think we're much better, much healthier, more productive board as a result. And so thank you very much. Um, I, just to kind of build uh, on uh, the district rezoning, I'm eager to uh, learn more about the committee work and, and the goodness uh, that I understand is coming to us in January, right? So we as a board have not uh, been into the details uh, of what's been uh, occurring in the committee. We've got kind of the, the high levels. We've got the opportunity to, to absorb the emails, uh, but I really want to roll up the sleeves in January and understand the work that was done. And uh, I look forward to, to the discussion. Um, it's not easy rezoning uh, and resetting the district. Um, and, and, and I think uh, we're eager as a board to, to get into that, uh, to make sure that uh, we're being smart uh, for the future and thinking through also the, 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 you know, the impact of change. Change is not easy. Um, so I'm eager to, to hear more. Uh, I'm also eager to hear um, in 2024 how we're going to address um, the uh, student growth uh, concerns that we've got, not only throughout the district, but certainly Creekside Park. And so I'm eager to hear um, uh, the superintendent's uh, decision in regard to uh, how we're going to address that. And on a personal note, um, just like to end with this um, to my fellow board members. Uh, as you know, I, I have a big heart uh, for our community. Uh, I have a greater desire to continue to serve. Um, as a result, I have discerned seeking state level public office. Uh, yet I've made a decision not to pursue it at this time. Um, you know, I've built what I think is a life centered around service, uh, where I've answered the call to certainly serve in the military and, and certainly again through my um, uh, uh, 13 years on the Tomball School Board. Um, you know, and so be it in work or volunteer service, um, I'm going to continue to serve our Tomball community uh, focused on student outcomes. and. Uh, I'll continue here in this, with the same passion and commitment that I always had. Uh, but I wanted to share that with you that uh, I'm Team Tomball. So let's keep going. Keep Tomball thriving. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Any other comments? I don't, I don't need to keep the accolades going, but uh, thank you for your work this year. I know um, my time as president and we had the COVID stuff and <laughs> That was nothing compared to the amount of emails that you had to reply to. So, um, you know, so I do, I, I feel you, I hear you, and um, a lot of emails you replied to. So, but you, you did a great job of all that, um, keeping all that straight. And um, I knew you were, you know, how you how you're made, lots, lots of, uh, of empathy for people and caring about people. Um, so I know you read them word for word and probably read them two or three times, probably for those really long ones. Um, so glad, glad you made it through and, and uh, we'll get through 2024 and whatever happens, happens. But you did a great job, especially the learning stuff. Um, I'm glad we made finally, hopefully made progress on quitting meetings at 12. I think that's a <laughs> new board policy we made. So glad we... I'm glad you finally got that squared up instead of being here until two, 2 in the morning. But um, but glad you did a good job. I know your wife is very happy that you're not Mr. President no more. <laughs> and then uh, just be a regular old trustee like me. Regular old trustee. That's right. <laughs> I think we actually had a night that went till nearly 3.30 in August. Didn't we have a night that went yeah. till? Yeah. I still have. We were nearly sunrise. watching the sunrise. Yeah. I just wanted to tell Mr. McLeod it's been a great 
first year, and right. he has great integrity and great leadership and compassion for this entire district, and um, you're very much appreciated. And Merry Christmas to our staff and students and all the parents in the district, and looking forward to 2024. And I, I guess I'll the last of so this working? It is yeah, now. Uh, I'll start first with Dr. Pratt. Uh, Dr. Pratt, I am very glad that you are here mm -hmm. and very happy that you will continue to be here. Uh, you raised some very good points. Uh, as you highlight, the district has a lot of work ahead of it, and you being a part of that work is going to be invaluable. Uh, so I, I appreciate that. Look forward to digging in on the zoning. Uh, I did uh, creep ahead and started pulling maps and looking at maps and things like that, watching the videos. Uh, because it's it's important, right? So I, I know everybody will take the time to soak in those things when and if it's our time to do that. So appreciate that. And also looking forward to an update for, for Creekside Park um, and the, uh, the growth that we have going on there and how we're going to address that moving forward. Looking forward to that uh, update coming soon. And then I'll end with thank you, Lee, for being the board president over the last year. Uh, I have learned personally and grown personally from your leadership and more importantly from your friendship. Uh, I, I feel truly honored to be able to call you a friend yeah. because you are. Yeah. Uh, I learned a lot. A um, lot of things to do, some things not to do, I learned. Uh, all, all of it very good and very positive though and uh, just as with Dr. Pratt and everybody else that sits up here, yeah. Tomball is a great place because you are here. Oh. Thank, Thank you, you. Appreciate that. Okay. So, Tina, you did raise a point. Um, this is your one year anniversary. Yes. yes. Come on. Yes, so, does it, it doesn't feel like it's been a year. It, it feels flew like. By. It, yeah, it flew by big time. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, congratulations on your one year anniversary on the board. Yeah. It's been fun. It has. You've been a great, a great contributor to the board, so appreciate you. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Shannon will appreciate you filling in for Dr. Z this evening. Um, is there any other comments or? Nope. Okay. Well, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion is made by Mr. Lewandowski, seconded by Mr. Scheel. All those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. We are now adjourned. <laughs>